Welcome to my Commodore 64 Games Memories. This is where I look at old games and some of the technical details behind them. Let's get into it. Today we have Dancing Monster. Now this is by, and I'm sorry for probably mispronouncing your names, but this is by Peter Deckney and Dean's Barn, and it was published in 1983 by Commodore itself, I think. So, this is the first game that I remember playing on a Commodore 64. I must have been not much older than an 11 or 12 at the time, I think, maybe even 10 years old, and it was a hot, long summer, and I played this at one of my friend's places. Uh, we went inside to escape from the hot summer sun, and the Commodore 64 was set up in a side room, I think, near the kitchen, and we had uh, lemonade or something like that, and some simple sandwiches or, or sticky cookies or something like that and we were just having a snack because the, the weather outside was extremely hot so this is a really unusual game it's a, a kind of like a game where you have to shoot parts of the dancing monster and then eventually once you shoot the parts of the dancing monster the monster will eventually turn back into the princess that they were originally before somebody cast a spell on them. Up in the top left you can see that the text changes to, to mention that you need to shoot the arm or the tail, TL is tail, the leg, uh, nose, tongue, ears, and so on and so forth. And the Actually it's quite annoying to play. You can choose the speed at which you want to play this game as well so I I've actually slowed this down to the slowest rate. I don't think I remember completing this when I was younger, but obviously now you can see that I've just completed the game, that was it, uh, where the monster turns back into the princess. There's a little bug in the bottom left hand corner of the screen where it hasn't quite updated it properly. Now, in a short while we're going to go into the technical details for this game by using again the ICU debugger which I normally use when I'm wanting to have a quick look at the game. But yes, that's that's all it is, it's Dancing Monster. A really weird game. The idea is to get the lowest score, the lowest time, basically. So here we are in the ICU debugger and we can see that there are actually two screens being updated. There's the character screen up in the top right and then the colour mapping screen in the bottom left. But this is actually in the 4000 bank. Now the real graphics data is actually rendered by the Commodore 64 from the first bank and the screen is actually at 0400 so it doesn't change where the screen is. It uses a customised character set but basically the, the dancing monster is a, a customised character set in the, in the first bank. Now the title screen looks like it's actually just a normal Commodore 64 character set which is, is not a surprise and also I think the score panel may also be the, the standard Commodore 64 character set as well or it may actually not even be using a raster intro I don't think it's just using a part of the character set now what is interesting is how the memory window is actually showing quite a lot of optimized code being executed now we can see here that it's using a lot of speed code this is where the code is unro unrolled to a large degree so you're not using index registers you're actually just executing a lot of loads and stores effectively uh, many kilobytes of loads and stores to actually quickly copy the screen that was off screen to the actual screen that's being rendered and also doing the copy for the colors at the same time so by doing this the screen update is actually really really quick and it reduces flickering so that's why they did this kind of update 
in the game. You can also see the sprites window actually shows the other parts of the monster as well for the horns and the tail and the tongue which again is not really a surprise uh, and that's basically this this whole game you can see that it's actually using quite a, a simple character set and, and just a, a rather speedy way of updating the monster. So if, if you like these kind of technical deep dive videos then please do consider liking and subscribing to the channel and uh, I'll add extra content. So thank you very much for watching, take care, have a great day wherever you are.